Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the value of pi using a Monte Carlo simulation. Many of you might have heard about a Monte Carlo simulation. So what is a Monte Carlo simulation? Well, it's a technique using which you can find an approximate solution to a problem. So what we do in this technique is we create a large number of trials and then we average it out. So we try to find an approximate solution by creating a number of trials for a number of finding a number of solution uh, for a given problem with a trial and error. Okay. And we'll see that how we can use that technique to find out the value of pi. And we do that using uh, creating random numbers. So computers helps us in uh, creating random numbers. Um, of course, it's a very difficult thing to create uh, a pure random numbers. But to a large extent, computers give us, uh, you know, a set of a list of random numbers using which we can find the approximate solution. So let's uh, see how we can solve this problem. So before that, we'll, we'll try to understand this concept. So here is a square and there is a uh, circle inscribed inside this uh, uh, inscribed inside this square. And we need to find out the value of pi, right? So that's the problem in front of us. Now we know that the area of the circle is pi r square, where r is nothing but the radius of the circle. Okay, so radius is like you know the distance from the center to the uh, to the edge of the circle. Okay, so this so that's the radius, and then um, if this is the radius, okay. Now if you join this, your diameter is nothing but the uh, length of each side of the square. Okay. So if radius is r, your diameter is nothing but 2r. So the uh, distance or the uh, length of each side of this uh, square is 2r. Okay. So area of the square is, is nothing but square of its sides, right? So it's square of 2r because length of each side is 2r, where r, small r, is the radi radius of the circle, so which is nothing but 4r square. So if I ask you what is the uh, what is the ratio of area of the circle and area of the square, we can easily get it, right? So area of circle is pi r square and area of the square is the 4 r square. When you divide that, the r square and r square cancel out and what we get is pi by 4. All right. So what does area of a circle and area of the square, area of the circle divided by the area of square represent? Well, it represents that if you, uh, if you try to find out uh, the probability that, see, there are a lot of circles, smaller circles or smaller point inside the square, right? And many of these uh, smaller circles um, are lying inside the circle, the bigger one, and many of them are outside. Uh, the circle, right? The red points, right? Many of the red points are inside the circle and many are outside of it. So if I, I would ask you, what is the probability that you pick a particular point, a red point that I am showing you here, um, from this, uh, you know, area, area under this uh, square, what is the probability that it falls inside the circle, which is nothing but the area, uh, the probability is nothing but area of the circle by area of the square, right? Using a simple uh, probability uh, definition, we can find out that the probability that a given point, a given point that has been brought out inside uh, from, from the set of points inside uh, the square, the probability that it falls inside the circle is nothing but the ratio of area of the circle divided by area of the uh, square. All right. So that's what we have found out here, right? Area of the circle by area of the square. So probability here is nothing but pi upon 4. The probability of finding 
a point lying uh, inside the circle okay is pi upon 4 well let's take for example x is a random variable and x takes a value of 1 if uh, the point uh, lies inside the circle and 0 if the point lies outside the circle now we'll try it for in n number of times n could be 100 n could be uh, you know thousand uh, uh, ten thousand uh, one lakh or a million it could be as large as we possibly can have okay so we take n number of times and every time we find that the point lies within the circle we assign the random variable x as one otherwise zero right so the idea here is uh, here is to find out how many number of times if you try n number of times out of n times how many times we actually hit inside the circle Okay, so that's the idea So if you try n, n times the probability or the chances that You would get points inside the circle is nothing but the average of uh, the summation of xi right so whenever you get a point inside the circle, you simply add 1, right? So you take the summation of xi because xi takes a value of 1 every time you get a point inside the circle. And then you divide it by the total number of trials, right? So every time we are picking a point, it's nothing but a trial, right? So we talked about a trial. So this is nothing but a trial. So it could be outside. It could be here. It could be inside also, right? So if it is inside, we simply keep on adding 1 to it okay and in the denominator we have total number of trials okay now this is nothing but the probability that you will hit a point inside the circle now we have already calculated the probability by dividing the squares right which is pi upon 4 right now we have an interesting uh, equations so this uh, this uh, term is nothing but pi upon 4. If I go to the next slide and show you here. So your uh, 1 by n summation of xi is nothing but pi upon 4. Because both the uh, LHS and RHS is nothing but the probability that you will hit a point inside the circle. Right. Now, given this equation, you can find out the value of pi, right? Pi is nothing but, you just take 4 to the left hand side. So, I'll just write it for you. Pi equal to 4 by n summation of xi. Now, the point here is, how do we find the value of xi? Because 4 is a number, n is entirely up to us, how many times we want to do this experiment or trial. And xi is the value that is going to change because you know the point could lie anywhere within this region anywhere anywhere inside this circle it could lie anywhere inside this uh, square okay so that is the uh, simulation part or that is uh, something that will be uh, done using random numbers okay now we'll use this concept to find out the value of pi using r We'll write a R code, R function, which will give it uh, the value of pi. And we'll use this concept. So, so we'll, I'll simplify it. Okay. So, uh, the simplification is that we take the circle, the circle that uh, is inscribed inside the square, to be an unit circle. So, unit circle is something that has a radius of 1. And uh, the center is, uh, you know, it's an origin. So, it's 0, 0, right? So the coordinate is 0, 0 and the length of the radius is uh, radius is 1. So r equal to 1. Okay. Now if you take a point, let's say I take a point over here and uh, it has a coordinate of let's say uh, minus 2, sorry, minus 0 0.2 uh, and 0 0.3. Remember it's a unit circle. So, you know, the, the coordinate has to be less than 1, right? Uh, so minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 is the coordinate over here. So what is the distance from this point to the origin? Well, the distance is nothing but your uh, 0 0.2 uh, minus 0 square plus 0 0.3 minus 0 square, square root of that, right? So 
from the Cartesian uh, or from the coded geometry we know that the distance between two points is nothing but uh, x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square and take the square root of that whole square root of that so x1 and x2 which is nothing but the origin okay is all zero right so the distance is nothing but your x coordinate value square plus y coordinate value square and take the uh, you know square root of that okay now that has to be less than one for a point to be inside a circle so now that's the criteria right so we were searching for a criteria how to know that a given point is inside the circle well the distance has to be less than one in that case right so we'll write um, so we'll use this concept what we have learned so far and we'll write a r code uh, for whatever we have learned so far so we'll write um, so this is we define a function pi uh, and then we're uh, iterating for n times so we're taking out n number of points and n is entirely up to us uh, and you know it's ideally it should be large quite large but depending on the computation power uh, you have to choose the n so it's something that's up to us so we'll define it as a variable n so it will iterate it through so every time we'll create a, uh, take a point we basically uh, create the coordinate x and y value right so every time you take a point it has to have a coordinate right x value and the y value right so we create coordinate over here x value is minus 1.2 multiplied to so i'll function use this random function which creates the random number okay and it creates uniform random number okay i'm not going to get into the details of what uniform random numbers are well uniform random numbers are derived from uniform distribution uniform probability distribution okay um, and the random number will be chosen with the minimum value of zero and maximum value of one so that's a property of uniform random numbers okay similarly we also calculate the value of y uh, using the same uh, you know uh, uniform random uh, numbers so we create uniform random numbers to find out the value of y now the reason why we have you know selected this construct you know minus one plus two multiplied to this one because every time you choose any random any random value between zero and one x and y value will never lie uh, will always lie between minus one to plus one so this condition has to be there right so in a unit circle um, so this condition has to be met for uh, for which uh, because you know if you take this one so this is like uh, minus 1 plus 1 so this coordinate uh, this word is this is plus 1 plus 1 and then this is uh, uh, plus 1 minus 1 this is minus 1 and minus 1 okay that means the, the coordinate have to lie between plus minus 1 to plus 1. So x has to lie between minus 1 to plus 1 and y has to lie between minus 1 to plus 1. And only with this uh, construct, I'm sure there are other constructs as well, you will always be sure that x, y values lie between minus 1 to plus 1. Right? And the condition that has to be met is that uh, the distance has to be less than 1. And that's what I have written here. So every time the distance is less than 1, we know that the point uh, lies within the circle now it could be the fact that the distance is not within one it could be more than one if that is the case then the point could be lying over here or maybe over here you know those you know places these data points these points are outside the circle and in that case the distance will be greater than one so every time we have a distance less than one we simply keep on adding right so uh, we're taking the summation of xi right so xi is the value that takes the value of 1 right so we have defined c equal to 0 and every time we have a point inside the circle uh, through this out iterations we'll simply add keep on adding 1 to the value of c right so pi is nothing but 4 by n right 4 by n summation of xi a summation is xi is nothing but we're calculating over here right we're simply adding one every time we get a value inside we get a point inside the circle 
So we calculate uh, outside uh, once you know the iteration is done with n number of iteration, uh, the loop is over. We have we, we, we calculate the value of pi because c is already a cumulative sum of every time we have a point inside the circle, and then we simply use this you know multiply it to four uh, upon one four upon n right, and then we return the value of pi. When you run this code. And I have run it for a few times. Uh, so I have run it for n equal to 10. This is a small number, right? Let's say, you know, out of 10 times, you found the data point to be lying inside the, uh, we found the point. Uh, every time you pick a point, it lied uh, bit to, uh, inside the circle seven times, right? So in that case, the value of pi is uh, 4 by 10 because n is 10 into 7, right? Uh, it's like 28 by 10, which is nothing but uh, 2.8, right? So it could be more though. It could be 8 also. If it is 8, then it could be 3.2, right? So uh, when I've run this for n equal to 10, I've got a value of 2.8. Right? It could be different also. If you run it, uh, you know, different. Uh, if you run it once more, you will you might get a different values because the random numbers are quite random. So you may not know. Uh, what is going to be the actual result? Okay, if I am running for 50 times, so second time I have run for 50 times, I've got a value of 3.28. I've run it for 100 times, I've got a value of 3.24. And then when I'm running for n equal to 200, I'm getting a value of 3.14. Now the pattern here is that if you increase the value of n, as we increase the value of n the value of pi is getting closer to the actual value. We know that the value of pi is 3.14 and if you see it is getting closer closer to 3.14 as we increase the value of n. So the idea here is that in Monte Carlo simulation uh, you have to do a large number of trials in order to be able to you know uh, find an approximate solution that is closer to the actual values. Hence Monte Carlo simulation is quite computationally um, you know, uh, intensive. So we'll see another example, and we'll take an, another example, and we'll solve it using Monte Carlo simulation in uh, in another video. Thanks.